Hello everyone. In this session, I will work an exercise that's going to illustrate the cash versus the accrual method. Now, this exercise you might be it might be helpful to you if you are a college student trying to differentiate when is revenue recognized under accrual versus cash, or when is an expense is recognized under accrual versus cash. We went over the rules, but it's very important to reinforce these concepts in a form of an exercise. Now, the exercise that I will show you too could be used as a CPA exam simulations. Now, nevertheless, on the simulations, you might have drop down boxes where you would select the amount or you input the amount under the cash or under the accrual. At the end of the day, you need to know the rules and you might have to type the numbers yourself. Let's go ahead and take a look at this exercise. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. In this exercise, we will work three different scenarios for John to determine John's income or deduction for 20x4 and 20x5, whether they are using the cash basis and the accrual basis. So we're going to take it step by step, looking at each transaction separately. Starting with the first transaction. In April 20x4, John paid a license fee of 1800 for the period May 1st through April 30th of the following year, X5. Now, what can we do with this 1800 in a form of a prepaid? This is a prepaid expense. Well, is this interest? No, because remember, interest has a special prepaid rule. So this is just prepaid business expense. What can we do? For cash method, remember, remember, generally we can deduct anything that doesn't exceed 12 months or extend into the third period. So what can we do with this? We can expense it. Remember 12 month or extends into the third tax period. So what? let me just tell you what does that mean. So we paid in May, this is X4, this is X5, and year three is X6. So as long as this prepayment does not go into let me change something other than green does not go into year x6 this is the third year what we should be fine we should be able to expense it also for cash basis we have this 12 month special exception for accrual we could also deduct the full 1800 because this we have this this special exception a 12 month exception okay so the cash basis can deduct the 1,800. The 12 month rule allows accrual taxpayer to fully deduct prepaid and the current year provided the benefit don't exceed 12 month after the tax year end. That's fine. We're in good shape for both. We can take the deduction. Once again, I want to remind you that for prepaid interest, the rules are different. For prepaid interest, you can do that. You cannot say, well, if it's less than 12 months or if it doesn't extend into the third year, I can deduct it. For accrued interest, you have to compute the amount of time that the interest has accrued in order to take the deduction. To take the deduction. Okay, let's take a look at prepaid rental income. Now, yes, <laughs> rental income, right? It's, there's a reason for that. In November 20X4, John collected 15,000 for February rent, uh, for the February 20X5 rent. So let's take a look at this one first. So this is X4 and this is X5. So in X4, John collected $15,000 for something that's happening in year X5. What do we have to do for cash basis? Well. For cash basis, you have the money, you pay taxes, especially for rental. <laughs> There's a special rule for rental. For rental income, does somebody pay, prepay you the rental? It's taxable to you. So for the 15,000 for February, it's, it's taxed when received. How about 
for the 15,000 under the accrual. Well, under and the accrual, if you follow gap, and we're not following gap here, this is tax, but if you follow gap, you're going to say, if I follow gap, I will have to recognize this in X5. Not at all. For accrual as well, John must report both the 15,000. The, the 15, let's, this, this, let's wait for the 3,000. So for the 15,000, although John received that money in year X4, you might say, since John is using the accrual and the rent is for X5, John can defer to be taxed on that money. Not at all. Rental income is different. Prepaid rental is taxed when received, whether you are using cash or accrual. Now let's take a look at this transaction. In February 20X5, John collects 3000 for December 24 rent. So we're going to change the scenario a little bit here. We're going to say in February of X5, the customer basically, the customer paid their rent that was due for December. So the customer paid the rent for December. For cash basis, what's going to happen for the cash basis since we received the money in X5, since we received the money in X5, it is revenue in X5. So for the cash basis, the 3000 for the January X5 rent is reported in X5 for, you know, not January, it's February. Okay, the, the money that we received in February is report X5, is reported in taxable in February X5, because under the cash basis, we, we get taxed when we receive the money. Now, for the accrual basis here, and this is cruel here, John will have to do what? John, the 3,000 is reported in 20X4 because this is rent, this $3,000. So the $3,000 was received in X5, but this $3,000 is for the rent that happened in X4. Under the accrual method, John will have to report basically rent receivable of 3,000, rent revenue of 3,000 in year x4 and that money although he received it in x5 it's taxable in x4 that's how it works this is the accrual so in x4 he will have to debit receivable credit rent revenue and here we're assuming john will accrue the revenue because if the landlord whatever they rented them let's assume an apartment building or an office if they if the, if that customer used it then they have a receivable and they have a revenue when they receive the money all what's going to happen in x5 when they actually receive the money in february x5 they will debit cash of 3000 and they will credit a receivable of 3000 there's no revenue here no rev in x5 why because the rev took place in x4 Let's take a look at an office equipment or a tangible asset or a long-term asset or an intangible asset, basically the same. In May of X4, John purchased office equipment for 320. He paid 170 in cash and gave 150 interest-bearing note for the balance. The office equipment has a maker's cost recovery period of seven years. John did not elect the 179 election and did that, decided not to take the first year of depreciation. How do we account for this transaction under cash and accrual this is easy why because if it's longer than a year it's a tangible asset both capitalize it means it's not expensed so the cash and the accrual will capitalize the the 320,000 that are that is that is that that's the cost of these what's it, equipment then what's going to happen they can claim or John can claim depreciation for that year a 320,000 times the maker's rate. If you don't know what the maker's rate, it's a seven year maker's rate, 14.29 for the first year. So John can take $45,648. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, especially MCQs, maybe some true false, to test your knowledge, to consolidate, to solidify. Whether you are an accounting student, whether you are a CPA candidate, or whether you are an enrolled agent or some other professional certification. Good luck and stay safe.